Hi friends, lower the volume or close your ears because now it will sound loudly. In front of you is an electroshock device of high power AK-22X. This design was developed many years ago. There were numerous modifications and reworks, namely, this model was created by me about three years ago and was always kept under the bed, just in case. Many articles are devoted to this electroshock device. The circuit was successfully repeated by hundreds of people. By the way, the circuit itself is freely available and anyone with skillful hands and some knowledge of electronics can repeat it. There are a lot of videos on this topic on the channel. Interested people will find links in the description. Now let's go to the point. I had a similar video last year about how to make an electroshock device from the old printer parts. Today we will continue this topic and will make a device using components from an old energy saving lamp. Gas discharge lamps have an electronic power source or ballast, which is located in the lamp base. The printed circuit board for such a simple circuit does not make sense, but if your projects need printed plates, we recommend the GLC PCB side. This is one of the largest PCB manufacturing plants. It's easy. Download your Gerber file, select the options you need, pay for the order and wait for the parcels. The factory will produce printed circuit boards of any shape and complexity. The price starts from $2 for 10 pieces. A link to purchase of GLCPCB will be found in the description. For our device, we need two economy lamps. If possible, then take three. But the lamps should be of equal power. In my case, they are 105 watts. Carefully dismantling the base of the lamp, we get a ballast board. In fact, it's a half-bridge auto-generating voltage converter, to which I devoted countless videos. We need to disassemble both lamps. We only need boards, and the bulbs must be disposed of according to the law. Let's heat the soldering iron and at first take out the throttles. It cannot be confused with anything else. Next, we unsolder this capacitor. It is high voltage, with a voltage of 1000 to 1600 volts. There is only one such capacitor on each board. Then, we unsolder the transistors. There are two of them, although only one is needed. These are high voltage NPN transistors. In my case, it is MJE13007. In yours, could be weaker ones from the same series. It all depends on the power of the used lamp. Of course, the transistors must be in working condition. They can be checked using a semiconductor tester. The board has a fairly large number of standard diodes. Among them, there are several pulse diodes of the FR107 series. We find them and also take out. Once again, I repeat, we need diodes with the marking FR107. That's all with the components, and we go further. The next step is the throttles disassembling and removing the winding. If you pay attention to the core, you can see the gap between the halves. The central core of one of the core halves is shorter than the other. So, we have two cores. We need those halves that are longer, from which we will assemble a new transformer. We will assemble an auto-generating converter, and in fact, we need a gap. But it should be small. The circuit will work even without a gap. On the frame of throttle, we wind the new winding. And now, please, the most attentive. Now a detailed process of winding of a high-voltage transformer will be shown. It's my technology, which has never failed. We need a wire with a diameter of 0.4 to 0.6 mm. There is no sense to take more for this circuit. You must take two wires, twist their ends together and start winding.
The winding should contain about 20 turns in two rows as shown. At the end we fix the wire on the pin. Then we take the most ordinary, cheapest, transparent adhesive tape and isolate the winding with 10 layers, paying special attention to properly isolation of the edges and connection points of the primary winding. Then we proceed to the secondary winding. It will generate a high voltage. The winding consists from 800 to 1000 turns with a wire from 0.05 to 0.1 mm. Such a wire can be taken from a relay coil from cheap Chinese wall clocks or bought in a radio component store. Winding must be done layer by layer. Each layer contains from 80 to 100 turns. On each layer we must put insulation from 3 to 4 layers of adhesive tape. The winding wire is never cut off, it goes ahead with insulation. First we solder to the winding wire a piece of standard wire, preferably in soft insulation. The place of soldering is hidden under the heat shrink tube. Try to lay the wire of the secondary winding as evenly as possible, trying to avoid overlaps. But if it happens sometimes, don't worry. After the first row, we isolate the winding, wind the second and isolate it, and so on, until the specified number of turns is obtained. At the end, the wire is cut off soldered to a multi-core wire. The place of soldering is hidden under the heat shrink tube. All is similar as we made in beginning. Next, we collect the transformer, the halves of the core fixed with a pre-cut strip of electrical tape. We must check the secondary winding for a brackage. The winding resistance in my case is about 135 ohm. It depends on the number of turns and the diameter of the wire, so that you can have more or less resistance. The main thing is that there is no brackage. In the event of a break, a multimeter will show an infinitely large resistance. Now let's go back to the primary winding. We must face primary winding by connecting the beginning of one half winding with the end of the other. If everything was done as I showed, just connect pins indicated on the diagram to get the midpoint. This is the point where the plus will supply from the power source. The transformer is ready. Well, now we go to the electric circuit. It's a high voltage step up converter of an auto generator type. At the output is a voltage doubler assembled on capacitors and diodes, which we took out from lamps. On the secondary winding, we have quite a high voltage, but the diodes FR107 are only for 1000 volts. Therefore, several diodes are connected in series. 
Thus, we obtain a diet pole whose reverse voltage is already much greater than for a single diet. It is possible to connect in series two or three diodes as shown at the diagram. At the output of the multimeter is established a chain of series connected resistors. They are needed in order to discharge the residual voltage on the capacitors after switching off the device. At this stage, it is necessary to check the operation of the previously assembled transformer. To do this, we must collect this part of the circuit. When powered by a 9 volt source, the generator circuit consumes only 200 milliamps, which is very good. At the output of the transformer, we get an alternating voltage of high frequency. It looks something like this. The arc is stretched to a sufficiently large distance. Hence, the circuit works as it should. Now it remains to assemble a multiplier, which will increase the voltage from the transformer to an even higher value. With the multiplier connected, the arcs already look like this. To increase the length of discharges or breakdown of air, we should add multiplying cascades, but even with two capacitors, this device sounds pretty well. Well, with three capacitors, we get something cooler. It remains only to install the whole device in a suitable case and that's all. The part of a multimeter with a high voltage transformer is very advisable to pour with epoxy or paraffin in the extreme case of the absence of resin. How dangerous is this device and can it defend you? Alas, for self-defense this option isn't the best because of the too low output power. In addition, the breakdown of air is small. If the attacker has thick clothes, such a shocker is useless. I mean specifically this sample, but anyway it bites rather painfully. Links to all components and ready-made modules can be found in the description. Please rate this video and if you have any questions you can ask them in our group. The link is also in the description. Now I have to say goodbye until new meetings. With you as always was Kasyan TV.